so um, we just find out that Grace doesn't have a heartbeat and all I can remember is I couldn't look at the ultrasound machine. All I could do was look into Jake's eyes and tell him how sorry I was. He just said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I immediately thought it was my fault. And I thought Jake was mad at me. And I felt so small in that moment because I was supposed to take care of her and I was supposed to bring her into this world. And I kept thinking up reasons why it was my fault. I started thinking up crazy things. I was like, did I drink? Did I forget my prenatal pills? Did I overwork her? Was I staying too busy with the boys? And I just went straight to blaming myself. And then I felt guilty because I did not notice the um, difference in movement. I didn't notice that it was still in there. And that haunted me for a long time because I thought that if I could somehow tell that the movement was slowing, that I would have been able to prevent her dying. I looked at the nurse and I said, well, what do we do next? Now what? And she said, you need to deliver your baby. I was so mad. I remember screaming like, I just want her out. I said, get her out, get her out of me. And I remember asking the nurse, I was so scared to see Grace. I was like, I kept asking what she was gonna look like. Was she gonna look scary? I mean, I had no idea. I've never had to experience death like this before. And Jake and I are just sobbing. The nurse brings me this bear. And she said, another mom that had gone through this donated a bunch of these bears for moms like me. They we're gonna have to deliver their baby stillborn. And so I hold this, I held this bear the entire time at the hospital and it was so comforting and so this bear also has a special place in my heart. <laughs> Just this simple little bear. <laughs> and this has kind of become Grace's symbol. Just the bear reminds me of her and it all stemmed from this. I asked for medication right away. I wanted everything that they had. I almost just wanted them just to give me as much as they could so I just couldn't feel anything at that moment. So the medication nurse came in and she gave me a shot in the back and I remember being very mad at her <laughs> because I was already in so much pain and that just really hurt. I had never felt that before in my back, the medication and stuff. And then she left and Jake and I just sat in the room and it was just really quiet and it was very still. And typically my labors are two or three hours. She was born about six hours later. This was just an experience I had never had before. I was always so excited to push the boys out and meet them and when they finally told me it was time to push her out, I was just so scared. I was so scared to see her. That makes me sad. It's not supposed to be that way. It's just not fun for a mom. Like, you want to meet your baby and I just couldn't in the same way. It took all the energy I had 
to deliver her. And then they put her on my chest and she was the most beautiful baby I've ever seen. She wasn't, um, she was perfect. Like she was seven pounds, two ounces, completely healthy baby. She was purple, soft, warm, had a full head of hair, which both my boys are bald. So I don't know how she got that, but I just held her and I just loved her and I didn't ever want her to go. And I just really embraced the time I had with her and so did Jake. And just so many things started happening when she was born. And then the nurses were so sweet, they gave her a bath and put her sweet little pajamas on that my mom especially bought for her. It had polka dots on it and it had a matching hat and it had ruffles up the zipper. And I just knew that she was gonna look so beautiful in it. And they put her in this swaddle. This right here. So she wore this. And this was her headband. This is perfect. Um, and she looked so beautiful in it. At first, I didn't know if I wanted her to wear it. And I'm so glad I had her wear it because this is the most precious thing to me as I grieve the loss of her. So we stayed there at the hospital all day and held her. Um, and then we had family come and see her. My mom and dad and grandma My brother, my sister-in-law. And then Jake's family, his mom, brother and sister, came all the way from Lusk, Wyoming and spent the time with us as well. So they got to see her that day and at around seven o'clock, she was just starting to deteriorate and was looking a little more purple and was a little more limp and starting to feel cold and that bothered me so I knew it was time to go so I left her um, in her pajamas I just wanted to remember her as my totally beautiful baby that she was all of our other family who couldn't be there physically because of distance. Um, my sister and brother-in-law and Jake's dad and stepmom. We just called them and FaceTimed because we were so proud to show off our baby girl, even though she wasn't alive. And that was super helpful for us, just for them to meet her. We had to make the decision of if we would bury her or cremate her and I was honestly not ready for that question but I had to make the decision and so I decided we decided Jake and I to cremate her because I didn't know where I would even bury her I had never had to think about that before and I also didn't I also just want her with us all the time knowing that we were going to be on this RV adventure. I just wanted her there with me going everywhere we went. So um, we picked out this bear. This bear. And I, we have her ashes in there. So that's just is in our trailer wherever we go. And another question was, do you take pictures? A nonprofit company, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep they have photographers that go to the hospital and take pictures of you and the baby and your family and at first we said no 
and the nurse said I think you should do that I would highly recommend it so he did she called in a photographer So now I lay me down to sleep, sent Marsha over to our room. She drove two hours in the middle of her day on a whim to take pictures of her and our family. Her name was Marsha and she will forever be in my heart. I'll never forget her. It was so sweet and so just nice of her and we needed that we really did need the pictures I didn't know it at the time and so now I have those pictures and I look at them all the time I have them in a photo book and when I miss her I can look through them and they are such beautiful pictures Marcia did such a great job we didn't know if we should bring Sawyer and Carter in they were at my parents house we were staying at my parents house this whole time and we went back and forth and didn't know what to do and then we decided to bring them into the room so they can meet their baby sister they are so young so they didn't really understand what was going on but i'm so glad that we have a family picture with the boys and baby grace and jake and i now that it's all over. When it was time to say our goodbyes, I just had a very hard time leaving the room and just leaving her in the bassinet. It was so comforting <laughs> leaving her in the bassinet with the most beautiful pajamas that I picked up for her. And she just looked so peaceful. And I just remember Jake and I leaving the hospital back to our truck empty-handed and that was just the hardest thing that I've ever had to do and we just held each other and walked through the parking lot until we got into the truck and we just cried we decided to get a hotel and not go to my parents that night we just needed more time I was running off no sleep I don't think I slept for three days but we um we went to the hotel and I grabbed everything that I had for grace any kind of gifts or flowers and I set up a little table in the hotel room and that just comforted me it was something to just show me she was still there part of her is all I had of her I didn't have her so frustrating and I just remember taking a shower and just bawling for like an hour and a half at the hotel and I just laid there with Jake and we just held each other and sobbed all night.